to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Look up, please. Look up. Many of us here have lost loved ones. Some of them have actually gone resting. It was their due season. It was their time. But can I tell you something? There are many people whose exit out of this earth realm is as a result of being victims of the claws and the pangs of death. And we must, we must contend and refuse. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is very important. When the Lord showed me this vision, I was very, very touched. And I knew that God wanted us to begin to speak and to open the body of Christ to the revelation that will sustain them in power. And now, I'm not one person who likes talking and announcing miracles and all of that. I like the things to happen and let the people just hear by themselves. But something happened very striking in the course of the week. A lady was in ICU. We hope that when she's done, she will come to testify. Hallelujah. And the lady was under some heavy gadgets and all of that. And then eventually she gave up the ghost. When she died, they were calling me, calling me and said this lady had died. Everything was over. It was packed up. And then I told the lady that was talking to me, listen please. I told her, I said, put the phone in the dead lady's ears. Just make contact with her ears. And she put the phone and I say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I knock on the door of life and I bring back her spirit to her body. Nothing happened right away. We off the phone. Brothers and sisters, this is verified. It happened in Asokoro just a few days ago. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, from nowhere, this girl sneezed back to life and started, when she sneezed, listen, 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 that's not even the testimony. When she sneezed back to life after some hours, she started shouting my name in the hospital. And she was shouting and she asked them to, she said, why did you stop me? This was her testimony, listen. She said, when she was going to the gate, she just found herself in a place, of course, for those of you who have read Divine Revelation books, you know. And she saw several people coming from the earth realm. And it was her time and she was going. Approaching and someone was, it's like people were going to the gates, you know. The pearly gates that the Bible talks about. And while she was there, she could hear from the earth that they are praying. It's like people were praying, different people. And then she said, the moment she was there, the next thing she had a loud shout and it was my voice. I was called, it was like a magnetic force. He was pulling her back and she was saying, no, I don't want to go back. And then the angel, she would enter the gate and the angel said, can you not hear that he's calling you? We cannot allow you to come. Listen, this is true. She's going to come here and testify. That can you not hear? And then he told her that it's not your time. Return back. And truly, when she spoke, it was the exact time that I was praying for her. Hallelujah. This girl, listen, that's not even the testimony. She, she came back to life with such a dramatic presence. She was blasting in tongues. When the nurse and the doctors came, the power of God came upon the nurse instantly. Right there. Listen, the doctor was so intimidated, he left. And the nurse was there. The, the lady who was talking with her called and said, I want to give my life to Christ. This lady was speaking utterly mysteries. Because she came back with an experience. I mean, her bed was vibrating. She was vibrating. I sent the text to a few of the leaders. This is how you know that. I, for me, it was a confirmation. The, the goal is not, okay, dead, raised and all of that. Thank God for all of those things. But for me, it was a confirmation. And then guess what happened? 
The lady said, one of the doctors came and looked at her. And he said, be careful. And then when she was sleeping in the night, one of the doctors came to her in the spirit to kill her in the hospital. Are you getting my point now? And then she began to pray. And then in the morning, he came and confronted them, for her, and said, listen, you have not seen anything yet. The lady that put her ears, huh, that put the phone in the ear of the dead girl, was just going to get brief bridges and return. And a car from their back just smashed that girl. And I heard she died in the afternoon. Can you imagine? Are you seeing that evil is real? For standing to make sure somebody did not die. Our hospitals have now become occultic places. Nina Yesune Bazan Koma Bazan Koma Baya Nina Yesune Bazan Koma Bazan Koma Baya Nasa Haluna I can take it no more. In my life, death has tried me many times. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So don't you think I'm just talking nonsense? From birth, the devil wanted to take my life. I didn't have the privilege of enjoying breast milk to start with. Let's even start from that one. Praise God. I've been diagnosed of all sorts of things. And I've seen the hand of God. Are you getting my point? I have met with armed robbers on the way. Car has jammed me once. So don't think I'm just talking rubbish. Death is a spirit. Tonight, we will rest this issue of death once and for all. Rome, Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. What is this mysterious phenomenon called death that can scare any man, scares the rich, scares the poor? Accidents, infirmities, incurable diseases, acts of wickedness and terrorism, all kinds of things that just brutally exit people out of this earth. Is there a way out? Revelations. Verse 8. Verse 7. Let's start from verse 7. Verse 7. Please read. And when he had opened the fourth seal, these were the, the riders upon the four horse. Are you getting my point? I heard the voice of the first beat and he said what? Come and see. Next verse please. And I looked and I behold and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was what? So this mysterious spirit that has been responsible for the premature exiting of people is not just a phenomenon the Bible tells us that he's a real spirit. He sits upon a horse and he does not walk alone. Hell followed him. I told you hell is a spirit. Are you seeing it there in your Bible? <laughs> hmm. And power was given unto them over a fourth part of the earth. So how does death manifest? It kills with what? Are you seeing now? Sword is the manifestation of that spirit. And he uses a word again. Hunger. It is still the same spirit. And number three. What you now call death. He named the event after himself. 
And then the fourth part he said, and with the beasts. You know who the beasts are in the earth? It's not just talking of wild animals. This is the terrorism and all of these things we call. He said, and with the beasts of the earth. They are all the manifestation of how this spirit operates. Are you getting my point now? Remember, Paul was saying he was confronted by beasts and wild animals. Right? He, didn't, he said although he was not just talking of literal animals. He meant these, those who were opposing the cause of Christ. And so he said, this is how this spirit, he sits upon a horse and sends all of these things as envoys. Hunger. The sword. Manifestations of beasts. And everything. But the Bible says he sat upon a pale horse. And his name is what? Death. You must understand that death is a spirit. Brothers and sisters. Accidents. Incurable diseases. All of these devilish dangerous things. As common as they look. They are the vehicles. Through which this spirit operates. Please get this. I know that many of us, some of us have buried our loved ones. Some of us have been victims of all of these things. Don't worry. Just listen to the word of the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please understand that nothing just happens in this realm. If you can believe this, this is your first deliverance tonight. Nothing. A car does not just jam people, brothers and sisters. At every given point in a man's life, He's been influenced by a spirit. There is nothing like neutral. Please hear me. You are either under the influence of the spirit of God or some influence of demon spirits. Is someone getting what I'm saying? When a man says he's an atheist, for instance, that in itself is a manifestation of the spirit of deception. Hallelujah. Everybody shouted, nothing just happens. Say it again, nothing just happens. Jesus was giving us an interesting parable. And he said, while men slept, right? While men slept, he said something happened. An enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and left. So that you lie down to sleep, fine and sound. And then by morning you wake up with a lump. Question, in how many hours did the lump just get up? What sponsored it that it grew more than the normal growth of the body? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now the Ebola virus and all those devilish things. Manufactured and fabricated from hell. Right? This is not the first time that devilish virus is coming to the earth. It had come during John Lake's time. And John Lake stamped it to his feet and it went back. And he says, let's try again. After many years. And let's see whether there are still ambassadors. I tell you the truth, there are still ambassadors. John Lake, that was the plague that was killing people. And John Lake said, what, what in the world is this? Let's go to the microscope. And he ended that issue once and for all. The earth is becoming more interesting. Are you getting my point? The earth is becoming more interesting because there is, there is an open confrontation of darkness. The Bible says, kingdoms will rise against kingdoms. But it is they that know their God. They shall be strong. Not they that have heard about him. Not they that preach him. They that have paid the price to know their God. They shall be strong. And they shall do exploits. In the name of the Lord Jesus. So death is a spirit. Very quickly. Is there a way out. Of the grip of this devil. And this spirit. That's what tries to come to take many people's life in the night. Many people, have you wondered, excuse me, have you wondered why people die in the night? Have you wondered why women make loose children in the night? Why not in the day? 
the mystery of the night. Hallelujah. And I tell you, there is a visitation of the spirit of death over the nation of Nigeria. I know it. I have seen it. It's looming across territories. Mysterious accidents. Mysterious rage and violence. The Bible says they are taken for a prey. And there is no voice. We are busy trying to raise money in our churches. We are trying to buy suits. The devil has distracted us, men of God. We are trying to buy new cars. And the devil tells the demons, keep distracting them. While death keeps wiping people. And for as long as it has not touched us, this is the same spirit that manifested in the days of Esther. Esther was enjoying in the palace. She did not know that God took her to the palace so that she will be a voice that will cry restore. She was the apostolic voice in that dispensation. And the Bible says, when Mordecai, who was a watchman, sitting by the gates, he said, I will stand upon my watch, Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower so that I will see what the Lord will say. There are no watchmen again in this country. We have lost the art of sensitivity. We have lost it to food. We have eaten the food of idols and the king's meat. A little sleep, the Bible says. A little slumber. A little folding of the hands. And poverty comes upon you like an armed bandit. This is what has happened to the church. We have been stripped and robbed. And we have been distracted because of the bounty. I believe in prosperity but not at the expense of that which the Spirit of God is doing. For as long as we are in our various churches and cathedrals, and we feel we are secured, and there are, there are many men of God who do not believe in the Bible, it's just that they have a lot of security. And they don't go around anyhow. Right? But there are so many people who are dying, who have stood face to face, and they applied the messages that we preach, and it didn't work, and they died. And we keep saying, don't worry. Who is deceiving me? There's got to be something authentic. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Why will I not talk of faith and courage when there are all kinds of bodyguards following and all kinds of security people and your car is a bulletproof car? Who will not have faith under that circumstance? And your flight is a private one. And everything. Listen, listen, listen to me. Listen to me. God will judge any man of God and any pastor who does not commit himself to teach believers truth, right? And to stand in the place of intercession and prayer and to shout restore. It's not only about collecting the tithe of God's people and telling them so seeds and do this. And then the moment they keep dying like chickens, the Bible says they are taken for a prey and there is no voice to say restore. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? Death is a spirit. I like everybody to say it. Death is a spirit. Say it again. Death is a spirit. If you know that death is a spirit, you will know that it's not a mysterious phenomenon that just comes. Listen, I travel all the time. I have, I have, I have in my little life, I don't know only God will tell, only when we get to heaven, that I will have the privilege of seeing the amount of poisons I have eaten in my life. One. Two. Only God knows the enchanters that speak spells every day concerning my life. You don't know? You want to be a man of God? You make impact and think the devil will fold his arms to watch. Never forget praying for one lady one time during Koinonia, um, during the counseling. And, and, and the spirit just shouted and said, Joshua, you, you. You know, just warning and all of that. Day and night, brothers and sisters, there are enchantments against the people of God. And so if you do not know where you stand, one outing you can leave and not return again. 
But let me tell you something. The Bible says the first Adam was made a quickening soul. But the second Adam has been made not a life-giving spirit. Not a life-possessing spirit. You have so much of that life. It is within your power to dispense it. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. How do you enforce your victory over this spirit of death? Especially in this day and age. Please write it down. There are principles. It doesn't happen by magic. Victory over the spirit of death. Number one. Realize that in Christ, if you are born again and you have given your heart to Jesus Christ genuinely, the Bible says in Ephesians 2 verse 1 that we are above. Everybody say, I'm above. I don't know how to make you believe it, but say, I am above. Say it again, I am above. It's a spiritual location. Ephesians 2 verse 1. So realize that you are from above. Hallelujah. It says, and you are sick, quickened, who were dead in your trespasses and sins. Verse 2. Wherein in time past, this and that and that and that, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. Verse 3. Okay, let's, let's just run. Look for that part that says we have been exalted above. That's why I'm looking for. Verse what? 6. Six, please. Let's just run down. Let's save time. And he had raised who? Everybody say us. That means not just Christ alone. The Bible says in the curse we identified with him. Is that true? By the mystery of the Holy Communion. Is that true? We entered into him. And so because we partook of the sufferings of Christ, we also partake of the glory that follows. Are you getting my point now? And the Bible says, when he was raised up, we were raised up together with him. And he has made us to what? Sit in heavenly places. That's an exact spiritual location. Next verse. Ephesians 1. Everybody say, I've been raised up with Christ. And I'm seated with him. Far above. Say it again, far above. Far above accidents. Far above death. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, say it all. Far above accidents. Far above terrorism. Far above death. Far above wickedness. Hallelujah. Yes, I believe this with all my heart. I'm going to show you a powerful scripture when we're ready to pray. He said, which he wrote in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Ah, uh, is that it? Anyway, let's, let's save time. 21. Oh, yes. Far above what? Principalities. How many of them? And power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this world, because there are names in other worlds too that help people in this world. So he said, every name, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Say, I'm far above. Oh, hallelujah, I'm far above. Far above every devil. Far above every enchantment. Every act of witchcraft. Just pray it in one minute. I'm far above. I'm far above. I don't live by the sword. I won't die by the sword. I'm far above. Just pray in one minute and we'll sit down and continue. Man, take a parada balada. No, not a victim of accident. No, not a victim of bomb blast. By the mighty hand of God. Shake it, baba baba. Shake out fear from your life. My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone forth from out of my mouth. I'm far above. Far above. In the name of Jesus. Far above thrones. Far above covens. Far above witchcraft. The Bible says it. I believe it. Jesus is Lord of my life. This word is true in my life. 
I'm far above. I don't doubt it. I'm far above. Seke porokoto baba baba. I'm far above. Hallelujah. So that's the first revelation you must have. If you must conquer this spirit of death. I'm far above. Oh, hallelujah. Let them cast their spells. Far above. Far above. Make all the enchantments. I will go out and come back safe. I'm far above. In the mighty name of Jesus. I am far above. Man take a lebar Far above. Death is a rider upon a horse. But I am far above. Hallelujah. Number two. <laughs> Hebrews chapter two from verse nine. Then we move to 14 and 15. Let me show you something powerful. Brothers and sisters, when a thing is a mystery in your life, it can confuse you. But when you unlock the mysteries, there is no confusion there again. Poverty was once as dangerous as death until men found out that there is an exact formula. And today they teach it with audacity. Is because many people have not studied the concept of death and life and they have not been able to prove to the body of Christ. The same way men fear death, that's how they fear demons. Is that true? That's how they fear poverty until certain people say, let's enter this thing and find out. And they entered and came out, they said, there's nothing there. But we see Jesus. Hebrews 2. Verse 9. Who was made a little lower than the angels of the... For what? The suffering of death. This is Jesus paying the price. Crowned with glory and honor. That he by the grace of God should do what? Should do what? Read your Bible. Should do what? Test death for who? Every man. The, this is your Bible. This is, that's why I started by saying, do you believe it? That means, once and for all, Jesus offered himself that the spirit of death will afflict him once for every man. It's not talking about sleeping. No! Jesus died a brutal death. That was the spirit of death. But he allowed it once so that no man would be buffeted by this nonsense again. The Bible says it. He tasted it. He tasted it. He tasted the sting of death. Are you getting my point? That was why when he was about to resurrect, those gates of death in, in Psalm 24 said, Who is this king of glory that wants to come back? No, when we close the door, you cannot come back again. Except somebody in this realm calls you. Who wants to call himself back? He tasted death. He tasted death. He tasted death. I believe this with all my heart. See, it is the truth you know that will make you free. Not the truth you have heard about. It is not the light that rises that makes you arise. It is the one that comes to you. Arise, shine, for your light has come. It has always been there, but it will never work until it comes to you. you say, and the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. Let's look at verse 14. Ah, I love the word of God. Everybody read. For as much as ye are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself took part of the same, that through death, he might destroy him that had what? The power of death that is the devil. Through death, he passed through it. So that he will destroy the power. The devil and his power. Remember in Revelation, he said power was given to that spirit. Verse 
Verse 15. Everyone read. And deliver them who through the word stop. Not through who through death. Through the fear. There is a terror. There is a spirit. That's why every time wickedness is happening, the spirit of fear always precedes it. To make people afraid. When a Habal is saying three days, you will not leave. He's releasing the spirit of fear. The fear of death where all their lifetime subject to what? This is what is going on. You can't go out in the morning because you are afraid. What if this car has an accident? What if the plane crashes? What if the luxurious just what if, what if, what if? Hi! Let me tell you. Brothers and sisters, do you believe what I'm sharing with you? You take this word as true and deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. The fear of death brings bondage. Some of you are supposed to have traveled. You can't travel because you are wondering the car Number three, realize that death has been defeated. Revelations 1 verse 18. Revelations 1 verse 18. Please, let's rush. Revelations 1 verse, 7, verse 18. Please just write it and then we'll read it quickly. One to read. This is Jesus speaking. I am he that liveth and was what? Dead. And behold, I am alive forever. Amen. And I have the keys. Is that in your Bible? I have the keys. In other words, it is within my power to control its operation. I have the keys. Please realize this. I'm building up a revelation. So we see that he tasted death and he has the keys. We're going to find out where that key is today. Because he was talking to the churches. Talking to John and then to the church. He said, I have the keys. First Corinthians 15 verse 55. The scripture we saw. How can a spirit terrorize nations? Terrorize people? Oh death! Where is your sting? It likens the way death takes people to the sting of a scorpion. So he said, I have given you authority over snakes and scorpions. Scorpions that sting. He said, oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, you have been boasting that any man you take must enter. Where is now your victory? There are people who have defied the power of the grave. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Number four. How do you enforce your victory? You must apply the blood of Jesus by faith. Now I'm teaching you how to make it work in your life. Exodus chapter 12, please. Verse 7 and then 12 to 14. Please, let's hurry up. Exodus chapter 12. Moses showed us this revelation. Everyone look up. Now, hold on. Can you see that this is not the first time the spirit of death is passing over regions? Is that true? It has happened many times. And you can exempt yourself and your loved ones first and then stand to speak over others. You cannot give what you do not have. Is that true? And they shall take off the blood and strike it on the two sides of the posts. And on the upper door post of the house wherein they shall eat it. Verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. And smite the firstborn in the land of Egypt. 
both man and beast and against all the gods of egypt i will execute vengeance i am the lord 13 and the blood shall be unto you what a token a sign a symbol a an indication for when i see the blood i will pass over you and what the plague the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. What's the name of that virus again? Huh? Ebola virus. And the plague, the Bible calls it a plague. It said, it shall not be upon you because it comes to destroy. It shall not be upon you. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, I have prayed for too many people to contact communicable disease if I was faking what I'm telling you. Are you getting my point? It's easy to pray for people in a distance. But when you lay hands on people and you are breathing on people, I do this everywhere I go. I would have caught all kinds of things by now. The last time I went for a medical checkup, the doctor was surprised. See, the Bible says, we, it says we are not how did he put it? We have not brought to you cunningly devised fables. If you don't believe this thing, it will show in your life one day and it will become obvious that truly you do not know. Hallelujah. Verse 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial and you shall keep the feast. What feast? You shall keep this mystery of the application of the blood. It's not an Old Testament concept. To the Lord, throughout your generation, He says you shall keep the feast in an ordinance. When? Are you seeing it now? It didn't say it will expire. The mystery of the operation of the blood to bring deliverance and to secure you is a mystery that had been there even before Jesus died. And the Bible says it is an ordinance that you will keep if you are interested in living. Are, are you getting what I'm saying now? So you must plead the blood. And there are three ways to plead the blood. Number one, in prayers. When you pray, you plead that blood. As the price. The blood not only saves, it delivers, it protects. You plead the blood in prayers. Hallelujah. Number two, by the mystery of the communion. The mystery of the communion. The cup. The body. And the cup. He says for this cause, many of you take it unworthily. And some of you are sick. Some of you are weak. And some of you do sleep. Number three. The mystery of the blood of sprinkling. Hallelujah. He said you shall sprinkle it upon your walls. And upon every of these things. Three scriptural ways of engaging the power of the blood to bring us victory. Let's hurry up. The last way, or the last way of enforcing your victory is through the authority and power that is conferred in the name of Jesus. I like this one. Goodness. One of my best scriptures, Luke 10, 19, please. I'm about to jump up right now. Mm. There is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain to break every chain Behold, see, conceive it as a reality that I have given you. I give you. The word there is not power like dunamis. is the word exousia. I give you authority. The authority that comes with my office, I give it to you. To tread upon serpents, scorpions, and over how many? All the powers of the enemy. This is the best part of the verse. And nothing 
shall by any means you went to school. Brothers and sisters, what is the meaning of by any means? Whether it is by your mistake, whether it is by your lack of prayer, what, by any means, if you stand in this office, I stake my reputation that when it comes to protecting you, nothing shall by any means. There are different means it can come through. Your carelessness, right? Your mis I, I teach you a secret of spiritual immunity. You will walk through challenges that are killing others by a mystery that you will never be able to understand. He said, nothing, nothing, nothing. It is on the strength of this scripture. The Bible says, surely they shall gather. But because their gathering is not of the Lord, they shall scatter. He said, they will come to you in one way and scatter in seven ways. Behold, I give you authority. Exousia. While I was in the earth, there was authority that was given to me. And by reason of that authority, forces bowed. They didn't bow because my name was called Jesus. They bowed because of this authority. Are you getting my point now? And the Bible says, Philippians chapter 2, from verse 10, it says, Wherefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name. What is in a name? It's an office. Jesus is not just the name of a person. The word Lord, see, listen. He said, God gave him a name. The name is not Jesus. I hope you know. I hope you know. No, the name is not Jesus. We call Jesus because it was the name of the person that stood in that office. Let's read on verse 10. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and of things in heaven and in earth and things under the earth. Next verse, please. And that every tongue should confess that that Jesus has entered this office called Lord. That's the name. That's the name. Lord, Master, Absolute Controller. And the Bible says whoever. That's why the Bible said the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. The walls and they. It was the revelation. It was the coronation service that the psalmist saw. So he said the Lord said to my Lord. Sit down at the right hand until I make your enemies. He never mentioned Jesus there. He said the Lord, the absolute control of the universe, now said to my Lord, who got it by conquest, sit down. And the Bible says, whoever enters this office, some things will start becoming possible. Are you getting my point? In Mark chapter 16, he said, this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, in this office, Higher. He said, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Whoever carries this office becomes a controller, becomes a mysterious commander. Listen, if I cannot make it for Koinonia or I, there is a program and they keep a seat here, right? And they say this seat is for um, maybe the president or the pastor somewhere, right? And I call Yinka and I say, Yinka, I cannot make it, but I send you with my name. Are you seeing that? What they are interested in is not the personality. It is the office. The moment he comes, listen. If Yinka donates 5 million, whether I like it or not, everybody say whoever occupies this office. That's why SSG, the secretary of the federal government will go and represent good luck. And they will say, and the president said, every presidential car you see presidency. It doesn't mean Aso Rock. That means the collection of the people that are in this office. I hear the chains 
falling. You will only confront death when you stand in this office and say, Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, that vicious devil that will make a driver lose control and maim and destroy people. Where is your sting? Listen, the patriarchs of old were men of war. They fought war from birth till they died. Yet they were not afraid of the sword. It's not like our own that periodically it comes. They were born and bred in war. David was a man of war. I hear the chains falling. I come in that name. He sent me as an ambassador. Oh, I believe it. First Corinthians, Second Corinthians 5, verse 21. An ambassador is one who has been sent. 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 Dear Lostborn saw so many miracles in his crusade. And when he stands on the crusade ground, he says, do you believe in Jesus? And they say, yes. He says, he sent me. He sent me to this crusade to tell you your sins are forgiven. He sent me to declare, I'm speaking to you, that in that office your sins are forgiven. Now, then, we are what? Ambassadors. Envoys. Representatives. With the full backing of heaven. The full backing. The Bible says, as my father has sent me, the same way he equipped me, the same way he was there for me, that I could call on a legion of angels. Brothers and sisters, this is not about being a man of God. This is your positional advantage. This is really the revelation of what we call new creation realities. Hallelujah. So you realize, Death is a spirit. It's not omnipresent. It operates through a network of wicked devils. But it's a spirit. And the revelation that you know translates into light. And when that death sees you because light cannot, darkness cannot stand light. So they shall take up deadly things and it shall not hurt them. They shall pass an environment that has Ebola virus. And rather than destroying them, it will be a blessing for those who are infected because you come in the power. Look, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, the Bible says before the, the great and terrible day of the Lord, Elijah will appear again. You know who Elijah was? Elijah is the spirit of the prophetic. It's a true apostolic spirit that will challenge anything that is not God. Hallelujah. It's important what you believe. It's important what you believe. Say, I refuse to fear. Say it, I refuse to fear. You must kill fear from your life. Brothers and sisters, people do not just die. And you know, hold on. If it's just death that many people are afraid of, do you know there is a state that you'll be alive and you beg for death because of the, the the way the devil can bastardize your body the bible says he kept his bones so that none of them are broken have you read that in your bible that's what we call shalom it's a covenant of peace nothing missing nothing broken hallelujah and he said peace i give you he was not talking of quietness he means I give you an ability to be undisturbed. My peace I give unto you. Not, that the, not as the world gives. So you can stand up tall and people are asking you what is the basis. You are just talking nonsense. Listen. I was in the city of Jos. Five days to 9-11. On the 7th. 7th of September. 2001 I think that was when the first disastrous strike of the enemy I was in the town 
I was in the middle of all of these things. Are you getting my point? In my little life, I have seen a lot of things. When the plane crash that was going to happen some years ago, I think last year or two years ago, I was on my way to worry. I could feel that spirit of death. See, it's not that it chooses a particular plane. They are bloodthirsty spirits that just keep hoping something will work. Well, because we had problem landing, and then we landed and we went to worry. I knew something was wrong. On my way back, I, I flew to Kano. While we were in the air, that was when the, the, the plane crash was happening. So many people were calling me, and because my phone was switched, they thought that, ah, something happened. Ha! Ah, Paul will go to a city, they will kill him. As soon as they leave, he will get up. <laughs> Mystery man. Yeah, it's in your Bible. Paul died many times. He will just lie down. And while they move, he will just get up. Don't get excited for nothing. Do you believe it? I remember a time when I saw in a vision, I saw my mother's coffin. I knew it was over. I saw people there crying. I saw it. And I got up. Ah, my family. There is a lady here. I'm sure she may be part of the people here. She used to be, when she was an unbeliever, she, used, she had one serious sickness, infirmity, and she was in the hospital. She told me that every time it was around maybe three to four, she would see the spirit of death. It would enter the world. You know how doctors walk around. She didn't know it was death, but this particular man will just enter and walk around to several beds. In the morning, you hear crying. They are dead. Oh, death, where is your sting? I have met the spirit of death once face to face in my life. Let me tell you that story briefly and then we pray. I was in secondary school and the way we arrange our beds I was close to the door. Listen, I'm being very sincere with you. I didn't know it was the spirit of death. While I was sleeping very cold I saw, you know how these films where they have these people that put on hood like knights, all these kinds of people. That's how it came. I woke up. I was not in a vision. Brothers and sisters, the same way I'm looking at you like this. He was walking around the hostel as though looking for someone. And then while it, everybody was deep asleep, which was mysterious, there was no light. And then while it was about to go out, I was looking at it. It was looking at me. When it was about to turn, I looked at it. Very dark with just bulgy eyes. You cannot see it. Some of you who have watched that film, Lord of the Rings, you know how those, those guys are, those kings? That's how it is. How do you think those people wrote these things? I saw it. I never had a conversation. But today, I know I will meet it many times in many miracle services and in my travels across and I've made up my mind I will stamp it every day of my life. You must make that determination because death is real. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The sting of death is real. If you joke with what I'm telling you, you will be alive in the morning. Ten minutes later, you are out. Take men of courage and audacity. Who is God speaking to tonight? Fear not, brothers and sisters, not the arrows of terrorism. There is a prophetic destiny in this nation. And the soul of this nation is already with God. Beyond the reach of anything. I shared this thing when I was teaching in, in PFN Crusade in Abuja. That's the reason why Nigeria has the letter Y on the rivers. It's an imprint of the signature of the word Yahweh. That God is in charge. Listen. Upon this nation. Yes. It's not, it has nothing to do with Lord to God. That was a writing. Isaiah 18. A land whose rivers divide. God wrote his name there. 
Listen, you know why he used the waters? Go and read your Bible. Water has always symbolized abundance and it has always symbolized the echo of God's voice. The voice of God upon the waters is mighty. Hallelujah. So many things will happen in this nation. Let me tell you. You see the thing happening? The Bible says, why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The church needs to pray and we need to realize that our prayers can withhold evil. Let's not just sit down powerless and hope that nothing will happen. Are you getting my point? And then number two, walk the principles of the kingdom. And brothers and sisters, you can walk fine, you can walk alive, you can move on strong. Refuse to die. It's a choice. Choose life. He said, I set before you. Is that true? Blessing and cursing. I didn't say the other three parts because obedience to parents you already know that right and then your assignment these are the three other factors that govern longevity your choice choosing life obey your father and your mother that your days will be long and it will be well with you and then finally i shall not die but live to declare are you ready to pray now rise up on your feet let's do some prayer even if it's just for five minutes hallelujah Please spare yourself 3-3. Three, three. We are going to pray. Before we pray for you, we are going to intercede for this country. 3-3. Three, three. Come on now. Let's pray. I call for that priest in you. Because we are about to pray. Spare yourselves and let's pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Shekete Papa. Pray for Zaria. Pray for Kaduna State. That's your Jerusalem. We stay the power of evil and death and terrorism we command as ambassadors shekete pokotopa we challenge thrones we challenge yokes we challenge spells every manifestation of the spirit of death of the sword of the wickedness of men we command those spirits rekete koto poko topa rente leke brosa embrekete tekete papa papa we cause the powers in the heavens we cause the powers we cause the activities of necromancers the activities of sorcerers the activities of wizards make them for Otopakaya. He makes the diviners mad. He causes the wisdom of the wise to go backward. We pray in the name of Jesus. We challenge death over Daria, over Kaduna. Over the north, over Nigeria, we rebuke you. We are the apostolic voices that cry, Restore, restore, restore. You will not take the souls of men. We forbid you by the hand of God. We forbid you in the name of the Lord Jesus. We forbid you, we forbid you, we forbid you. We pray for the peace of Daria. We pray for the peace of Kaduna State. We pray for the peace of the North. We pray for the peace of our dear nation. God's own nation. With the signature of His Majesty upon the borders of our nation. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? Oh death, where is your sting? Hallelujah. 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 Listen, I want you to rebuke the spirit of death. You now know it's a spirit. 
cast it away from our environment cast it away from your family it will not come upon the head of any of your loved ones go ahead and speak I cause death over this territory over my family my loved ones are covered there is a shield there is a shield that rider upon a pale horse will never find entrance not by accident not by sickness not by pestilence not by plague I break the power of death. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, And they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. I'd like you to plead the blood of Jesus across the territories like the lintel of the houses and upon your life and your family. Go ahead and plead the blood. We invoke the power of the blood. We invoke the mystery of the blood. The mystery of the blood. The mystery of the blood. Pray, Koinonia. Over Zaria. We invoke the mystery of the blood. Over Katuna State. We invoke the mystery of the blood. Over Nigeria. We invoke the mystery of the blood. Over our families, we command the blood. The power of the blood. We are sealed with the blood. Unto protection. Unto perseverance. Unto preservation. Unto health. Unto wellness. Pray. He said, my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that has gone forth from my mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to pray. It says, I give you power. I give you authority. Hallelujah. I give you authority. Exousia. I bring you into an office and I give you the backing of that office. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. And in the name of Jesus, you are going to release life everywhere everywhere in your life go ahead stretch your hands across the north the south the east the west go ahead and begin to prophesy life go ahead we speak life we speak life life we prophesy life to the borders of this city we prophesy life life we come in the authority of the Lord Jesus. Life. Life. In all the 36 states of the Federation, we speak life. 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 We prophesy. We release the spirit of life.
Hallelujah. Look up, we're rounding up. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now let me explain to you what you just did. Verse 2. For the law that activates the spirit of life can do something it can set men free there is a principle that activates the operation are you seeing it now when it comes to conquering sin and death there is a spiritual law it says it's called the law of the spirit of life that is resident in christ jesus for the law hallelujah two more prayer points you're going to invoke the operation of this law in your life and say in my life right now the law of life the spirit of life begins to work every dead organ hear the word of the Lord every infirmity the spirit of life the spirit of life the spirit of life Holy Spirit manifest as the spirit of life in my body no cancer no HIV no Ebola virus no infirmity the spirit of life activated is a law it needs to be activated the law of the spirit of life the law of the spirit of life that is resident in Christ Jesus immunes me, sets me free from the oppression that brings sin and death. I choose life. I choose life in my body. I choose life. Hallelujah. 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 Psalm 91. Psalm 91. From verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Next verse. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night nor the arrow that flyeth by day. Next verse. Nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, not the destruction that wasted in noonday. Next verse. A thousand shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand by thy right side, but none shall come near, near you. Say it shall not come near me. Say it, it shall not come near me. Now in the next one minute, with every strength you have, you know all the weapons that this spirit uses accident whatever come against them you are far from my dwelling no accident not to my life not to my family not to god's people i cause that spirit pray
Take a pop of the Lord. Take a pop of the Lord. No death, no accident, not by the sword, not by the arrows of wicked men, not by gunshots of robbers and wicked men. There is a spiritual immunity at work in my life, at work in my family. Hallelujah. 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 Let's look at two scriptures. Matthew 16, 28. Oh, very quickly, we're almost rounding up. But this is very important. For many of us, I tell you the truth. This will give you confidence. Are you ready to read? Want to read? Verily I say unto you, there are some people who are standing here. By whatever spiritual immunity, they will defy the laws of death. And they will be standing tall John 8 verse 51 We're rounding up. Please believe these things. This is what makes men confident in this kingdom. You must be standing upon something. One to read. is in your Bible. It may be very difficult for many of us. He said, man shall not live by bread alone. There is another technology that can sustain the life of a man. He said, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. And the Bible says, if you keep that saying, it can do something to you. It will become for you the same thing as eating of the tree of life sustain you. Hallelujah. The last scripture and then we are done. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. Thank you Jesus Christ. We are doers of the word. And God is committed to making this happen. There is no magic about it. Verse, from verse 2 or 3. Let's save time. Verse 3. Verse 3. Blessed shall thou be in the city and blessed shall thou be in the field. Verse 4. Verse 4. He said, blessed shall be the fruit of your body. Listen, take seriously what I'm saying. I'm not just speaking nonsense. And blessed shall be the fruit of your ground. Blessed shall be your cattle and the increase of thy king and the flocks of thy sheep. Verse 5. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Verse 6. This is the verse. Prophesy to yourself. One to read. Listen. That means when you go out, you are expected to return. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are going to pray. This is the last prayer point. The Bible says you are blessed when you come in. That means you go on a journey we expect you to return. Hallelujah. You are in a flight we expect you to arrive. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? It doesn't matter what happens. Lift your voice and pray. I am blessed. As I go out, as I come in, I am blessed. Empowered supernaturally. Blessed in my coming in. Blessed in my going out. Blessed in my coming in. Blessed in my going out. Hallelujah. 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 We'll take one more prayer point as I invite those. Listen, as we take this prayer point, if you know that you have never given your life to Jesus Christ, you can see the seriousness of repentance. Or you have given your life to Jesus Christ, but honestly, you have not made up your mind. We are very serious about this. As we take this last prayer point, please, there's nothing to be ashamed of. This is about your life. You've, give, you've never given your life to Christ or you want to make your ways right with God. I want you to quickly come and stand here. Hallelujah. Quickly, quickly come and stand. As we pray, don't wait until we start calling. We are out of time. And we want you to come and stand. Hallelujah. And say, Lord, it's, 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 we are not playing games. I mean business with you. And I surrender everything. Hallelujah. So as we take the last prayer point, please, all the people that belong to this category, come it will be my joy. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Don't sit down deceiving yourself. You can see that the, the day and age that we live in, the seriousness, your, your belonging to God is very, very important. It does not just guarantee your eternity, but even here in life. Because all these things we have prayed is, is only for those who are in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Only for those who are in the kingdom. Only for those who are in the kingdom. Only for those who are in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now we are going to pray. We are going to speak over your life. Any area of your life that has experienced death. I don't care what area. I like you to speak. Because this death does not just work just in your body alone. You are going to speak. Call it and say, I release life. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare life. Go ahead. While those who are giving their lives to Christ come out, let's pray. Life to your finances. Life to your health. I don't care what the doctors have said. Life to your ministry. Life to your business. Life to your academics. Life to your family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remain standing. Please, if there are anyone, if there's anyone joining this gentleman, please come out quickly. Aside from that, let's pray. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I believe you died for me. Tonight, I make Jesus Lord of my life. I repent of my sins. And I receive the gift of eternal life. I declare that I'm a child of God. Washed in the blood of Jesus. Spirit of the living God. Come and live in me. Make me an ambassador. Make me a mighty man in the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. I salute you all for coming. Please just follow the ushers. Follow the ushers. They'll have your details. God bless you, sir. Thank you for the bold step. Just follow the lady waving her hands. Hallelujah. Let's remain standing, please. If this is your first time worshipping with us here at Koinonia, we love you and we want to pray and bless you. Please find your way to the front. Wherever you are, please. If you came with anybody, push them forward. You love them too much to allow them Hallelujah. Don't wait for anyone. You are the first person. God bless you. 
Koinonia, celebrate them. Mommy, God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Please keep coming. We want to pray for you. We are anointed people when we pray for you and we bless you and we speak over you. You truly are blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. This is Koinonia. We honor you for this that you have done. May God bless and increase you in Jesus' name. We are here every Friday building and trusting God to equip us. We speak over your life. Whatever challenge you came here with, in the name that is above all names, it leaves you tonight. Never to return again. Stretch your hands, saints of God, and bless them. You are life-giving spirits. Go ahead and release that life. You are life-giving spirits. It is within your power to release life. Authority has been given to you in Christ. You occupy an office. You are an ambassador. When you speak life, it becomes so. We command life in the name of Jesus Christ. We command life. Life in every aspect of your life. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.